Hello. How's it going, everyone? Oh, man. Let me switch over to the... Uh, there we are. In the studio. Sunday. It is. It is. I'm a little off today. I'm used to, we're used to doing this on Fridays. Got our coffee instead of our beer. Right. Speedy premium. Speedy premium. <clears throat> Had a pulley sausage roller dog on my way over. Uh, you had a what? A roller dog. Polish, roller dog? A Polish sausage roller dog. Polish sausage They only had one dog. hot dog bun left, which was kind of disappointing because it's like two for 222. Well, I could only get one. Two for 22? Two for 222, I think, is the deal. And uh, they only had one bun, and I wasn't going to wait for her to go find more. So I only got one roller dog. Could be, <laughs> a, <coughs> could be a good thing. I don't know. <clears throat> right. You never know how them roller dogs are going to treat you. <laughs> <laughs> never know when they were last prepared. <laughs> they looked like they'd been on there all night. But I didn't <laughs> care because <laughs> I was hungry. They looked like they were all night. <laughs> they didn't have like the uh, the grease on them anymore. They were just dry and like... Yeah, it was all pretty dry because I didn't put anything on it. It was just bun and dog. <laughs> <laughs> just bun and dog. <laughs> yeah, it was dry. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> Raw dogging it. <laughs> <laughs> we're all dogging it. You're right. We're all dogging it on the bun. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta fix this. It's like. And you know, have you ever just tried washing something down with coffee? It just doesn't. It's not the same. Yeah, the only good thing to wash down with coffee is like breakfast food. Yeah. Like eggs or bacon. Eh, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I can't. If like my if I eat something dry, I can't wash it down with something hot. Oh really? Yeah. It's it gotta just, be cold. Yeah, it's gotta be a cold beverage. Maybe a little ice water. I had some water in the car, so <laughs> it was good. <laughs> water's always good. It's the essence water, of life. I'm not a water fan. Not a water not fan? A, not a fan of water. Don't don't care for it that much. If you have to drink it, though, do you, no, do you prefer it room temperature or cold? Um, Not I like super cold because it hurts my teeth, mm-hmm. but, but not. I'll drink it room temperature, but I prefer it chilled. Chilled. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it like super duper cold. A solid know, 40 degrees. I probably have some cavities or something that's irritating. I don't know what it is, but... I'm not going to the dentist, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, <clears throat> not only that, but we found other things. <laughs> We're just going to rip all those teeth out. That'll be $9 million. We're just going to cut your head off. <laughs> be better. You'll be better off. Yeah. Not a real big fan of doctors. and No, they think they know your body, but they don't. You're like, this is my body. So I'm going to tell you what's wrong. Well, it's just like. Oh, well, let's do this and this and this, and you'll pay ten thousand dollars. And like, oh well. Oh uh, well, it turns out that was that not it. it. Let's do these ones. <laughs> <laughs> let's do another ten thousand round three. All right. Yeah. That and I don't like taking medication because it always messes with me. Right. Anything. Every time I take any kind of medicine, it puts me through some kind of loop. Yeah. I don't like drugs are bad. <laughs> it's like when I got T boned. He gave me muscle relaxers and painkillers. Hmm. And I took like the dosage he told me to. Dude, I was like almost in a coma. Wow. Yeah. See, last time I took muscle relaxers, I was just drooling. I didn't even know it. When I hurt my back, they gave me some, but it didn't do anything. I didn't feel it a bit. <clears throat> like yeah. it didn't help. I ended up going to the chiropractor, and she fixed it. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah, she did something. She cracked my back around, and huh, I was all better. But the doctor, like, she did more than the doctor did under under workman's comp. I went in and she goes, "Now lean over and touch your toes." I'm like, okay. Did she? <laughs> what she follow with after that? Did she say, "I'm going to show you where the wild goose goes"? <laughs> <laughs> no, she we, we just ran her fingers down my back like a weirdo, and goes, "Well, here's some muscle relaxers. See how that does." It would have been really weird. She's like, "I like feeling every bump." <laughs> yeah, uh, but I went to the chiropractor and she took an X-ray. I was like, "Yeah, you got a little bit of a." scoliosis it looks like but i don't have any x-rays to compare it to and i think that's how i hurt my back because it looked like my mm. i tried picking up a safe yeah, well, that'll do it <laughs> that'll do it i picked it up and then i went back down <laughs> i picked it up and went be- <laughs> okay <laughs> i literally lifted it up got it past the threshold of the door and then i went like this <laughs> <laughs> did it fall back no i did <laughs> yeah, you were like, no. We had it laid flat on its back on a cart, on this big cart, and we were trying to get in this house. And it was like a fifteen hundred pound safe, and there was four or five of us moving it. And I took a corner and tried to. We just needed to move it up a couple inches to get over the threshold for the door. Yeah. And uh, so I picked up my corner, and I lifted with my back. 
never with my uh, knees, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's either you're, you're going to hurt your knees or you're going to hurt your back. Yeah, you might as well just take the back out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That way people are like, your back hurt? Yeah, dude, it does. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Man, my knees hurt. Like, Who goes pussy? Yeah. Man up. <laughs> <laughs> but now my shoulder's going. Because everybody know. can relate to back pain. Mm-hmm. But you'd be like, oh, my knees, dude. And they're like, my shoulder, so? my shoulder right here. Now it's going. It's yeah, gonna, it's, it's that's gonna, part of the back problem. It's gonna that bad boy right there. <laughs> bad boy, it's gonna snap. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome back, everyone. We are on episode one hundred and eleven. Yes. Today's guest will be the Underground Vault, all the way from the UK. So we're pretty stoked about that. We talked to them. Oh man, when was that? Like last July? Was that last? Was July? it last year? Was it the year? Was it our? Was it the year before? I don't know. It's been a while. Um, I, could I think it was it last I year. I could look it up. I think it was 2017. I mean, oh wait, today it's 2019. So yeah. Depending on if we titled it right when we did it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look but, it up here and see. It was back when we were doing audio only. So yeah, it was. So that was like... Everything runs together. It does. You know, after over 100 episodes, you're like, when was that? Content. Let's see. Yeah, they'll be on at... Wow, there's 10 pages. Wow. They'll be on at 12 p.m. Uh, here in the States, and then uh, 5 p.m. over there in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, they just released a new EP, so we'll be talking about that. We'll be checking out some of the music from it as well. Yeah. I'm Was still it? looking. I'm still looking. <laughs> Was it like in the forties, maybe? I don't know. Oh, we don't even have guests really. Ross, no, that wasn't even. A, he wasn't even a guest. I don't think at that point we were just talking about him. Right. Um. Titty City. Titty City. <laughs> Those guys were cool. <laughs> I know. I've been thinking about reaching out to them. And be like, hey, you guys want to do video interview? <laughs> so while you're looking for that, I'll go ahead um, and do uh, our little history lesson here. Um, on this day in music in 1959. 22-year-old Buddy Holly, the big bopper and Richie Valens, age 17, died in a crash shortly after takeoff from Clear Lake, Iowa. <coughs> the pilot of the single-engine Beechcraft Bonanza plane was also killed. Holly hired the plane after heating problems developed on the tour bus. All three were traveling to Fargo, North Dakota for the, sh- for the next show on their winter dance party tour, which Holly had set covering 24 cities in three weeks to make money after the breakup of his band, The Crickets. Nice. The and year it, before. You were right. It was July 2017, episode 50. Episode 50. Nice. So, so that was 60, 61 episodes ago. Yeah. Wow. We've come a long way. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, February 3rd, 1967, producer Joe Meek shot his landlady, Violet Shinton. Why do you do this to me? Uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> shot himself at a flat in London. Meek produced the... Uh, the tornadoes hit uh, Telestar, the uh, first number one in the U.S. by I can't talk today. <laughs> in the U.S. by a British group. Meek was interested in spirit spirit ghosts <laughs> and often attended seances. <laughs> <laughs> At one such meeting in 1958, he was warned that Buddy Holly would die on February 3rd. Meek tried his best to find Holly when he was in London to warn him, but failed his mission. Holly died on February 3rd, 1959. Isn't that crazy? Ooh. Ooh, spooky. Ooh, spooky. Spooky. I like spooky stuff. Yeah. So on the local spotlight, uh, Friday, February 8th, People's Live presents Disco live at the Knickerbocker Saloon. Show starts at 9 p.m., $10 cover, 21 and older. I got the coffee sweats. And got I the put coffee deodorant s- on. Got the coffee sweats. <laughs> <laughs> I got put deodorant just gotta, on. Just got to wave them out, man. I got the coffee sweats. Got the coffee sweats. <laughs> uh, Saturday, February 9th The Zeros will be performing at 6th Street Dive Show starts at 9pm <laughs> Oh man I, Yeah, <laughs> I don't know Good thing I took my hoodie off Good thing I took the hoodie <clears throat> off <coughs> So Fire Festival bottled oh. water guy Andy King is getting <laughs> his own show it'll be, sh- it'll be a show about Hosting events and what it takes to make them happen <laughs> 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 so did you uh do you watch the netflix one i did there's a do you have hulu still 
Yeah, I didn't watch the... I watched the Hulu one the other night. Did you? It was pretty good. So apparently, they said on that one, the Netflix one was produced by the Jerry Media Company, I guess. Oh, was, the Fuck the, Jerry? Yeah, the Fuck Jerry Media Company that was with Fire doing the PR stuff for Fire Festival. I don't know who did this one. I don't know who did the one on Hulu. I don't know. But it had like this same people they were interviewing, right? Yeah, it had some of the same people. I don't know what... I kind of missed it at the end. There was a beef between the Fuck Jerry people and the people that did the Hulu one, I think. <laughs> Because yes, they had let a, them fight and then do another documentary. They had an ex employee of, um, that fuck Jerry that was on the Hulu one. Mm-hmm. I think the Hulu one they kind of blamed the, that PR firm a little bit for the problems too. I think yeah, then yeah. more than they did in the Netflix. The Netflix one they didn't take any blame of it because obviously they produced it right. But in the Hulu one, I think they I think they kind of showed that maybe there was a little more blame on them too for not putting a stop to it. Which really I right. mean, they. From what I saw, either way, they didn't really know because uh, they what? didn't go to it. Come on, camera. It. Why are you doing this? Come back to us. <laughs> Watch, I'll put my hand down. Slowly. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why. It's. There'll be weeks where it'll be fine, and then just like one time, it'll be like, nope. Yeah. But yeah, so... Um... I think the Hulu one, they kind of tried to say that the PR people had more of a blame than what they did on the other documentary, but hmm. really it all still comes down to that Seth MacFarlane, or not Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> Billy you Mac- leave him out of this. <laughs> Billy MacFarlane, or yeah. whatever his name is. So, yeah, he was a douche. Yeah. Like, when you watch it and you see how he's acting, in the Hulu one, they show footage of him kind of, I don't know who talked to him or when they talked to him, but they had like a little interview that somebody was doing with him and they were asking him questions. Mm-hmm. And you could tell by the way he was acting like he's a shady person. I would have never worked oh, with this yeah. dude. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh Green Day's album Dookie is now twenty five years old. It was released in ninety four. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Still one of the greatest albums. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Bring Me the Horizon score first number one album with ammo. Ammo. Amo. 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 I don't know. I've heard the album's really good. Yeah. Um, former Kiss guitarist Ace Freely accuses Gene Simmons of groping his wife. What? Like recently? Probably not recently. Uh, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would? <laughs> I hope it was recently because why would yeah. you just now air that out <laughs> between your band? Did you touch my wife? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Stars Born, starring Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper, is now the highest grossing film starring musician. Huh. I haven't seen it. I, I haven't either. It I've looks kind of boring to me. <laughs> I've been waiting on it to come out, because I've been really wanting to see it. Yeah. Uh, Bonnaroo to bring back women-only camping area. Hmm. So, cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Craig, Slaves Part, Slaves Part Ways, Folly, Singers Relapse. <laughs> Trying to get out of burp and do the sentence at the same <laughs> time. <laughs> I don't know, but fuck this cold. Yeah. So we got uh, some upcoming tours. Uh, Knocked Loose announced U.S. spring tour dates. Oh, that's what. It, yeah, it, I don't know how that got moved. separated. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. All that remains in Nutella announced a massive U.S. tour. That'd be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. Uh, Ice Nine Kills and From Ashes to New announced co-headlining tour. Right on. Beartooth announced the Disease Tour Part 2, supporting acts of Mice and Men, Hands Like Houses, and Dead American will be joining the tour. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Dead American. Yeah. Badass. <laughs> that interview was so fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Plot and You announce a headlining tour. Uh, uh, Siler announces first headlining tour in the U.S., Dude, I'm stoked about this. Newfound Glory announced summer tour dates. <laughs> That'd be fun to go to. Well, we could. They're coming to Indianapolis. No shit. Yeah. We'll be at the old National Center with the early November. <laughs> nice. And real friends. Nice. Stoked. When's that? Do you know? Uh, it is... Hold on. It is June 18th. It's a Tuesday. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> Getting married June twenty second. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that could maybe. be my bachelor party. Ooh, go to a concert. Ooh. Yeah, I've been trying to come up. Why camera? Just why? 
Because she says no strippers. Well, that that's a good rule. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have to follow it, do I? Well, I, I mean, she's watching, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Memphis May Fire announced tour dates with He Is Legend. Um, Third Eye Blind and Jimmy World announced Summer Gods tour. That one's June thirtieth. Nice. In Indy. I'm hopefully gonna be on a honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to go to Key West. Ooh. Yeah. So we got some canceled, uh, canceled tours. Ozzy Osbourne cancels entire European leg of tour due to health issues. It was reported the 70-year-old rock icon was postponing the first four dates due to the flu and bronchitis. Damn. Yeah. However, he's been forced to cancel the entire leg with Judas Priest due to more severe health conditions than he previously thought. According to People, Osbourne paid his doctor a second visit and was diagnosed with a severe upper respiratory infection. The doctor worried that touring could make the infection worse and it could help develop and it could develop into pneumonia. Hmm. Uh, Osborne said, I'm completely devastated for having to postpone the European leg of my tour, Osborne says in a statement. Uh, it seems that since October, everything I touch has turned to shit. I want to apologize to all my fans who have been so loyal over the years, my band, my crew, and to Judas Priest for letting you all down. However, I promise the tour with Judas Priest will be completed. It's been rescheduled right now to start in September. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, that sucks. Um, but yeah, better get home and rest up on that. Yeah. <coughs> That's no fun. I just... No, no. <laughs> just text me and said her kid... Super worried about where we're going to watch the Super Bowl and what party we're going to. I'm like, why? She's like, because he likes to party. <laughs> <laughs> like to party. Because <laughs> he likes to party. <laughs> <laughs> you care if he got on? I guess he's going to be with us if we come out later. Who? Sean, her 11-year-old. Oh, no, that's fine. So oh, okay. I'm going to stop texting. <laughs> added a new section here, some music I see festivals. That. Music festivals. Uh, the Bunbury Music Festival announces Fall Out Boy, the 1975 Machine Gun Kelly, Stone Temple Pilots, Dashboard Confessional, Bayside, Lovely the Band, and more for a 2019 lineup. <clears throat> right on. Um, Reading and Leeds, revival, massive lineup for the 2019 Music Festival, including the 1975 Post Malone, 21 Pilots, Foo Fighters, and A Day to Remember and more. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Uh, Slam Dunk Festival adds 10 more bands to the 2019 lineup. The UK Festival is bringing in acts like All Time Low, uh, Real Friends, Simple Plan, No Effects, Newfound Glory, Water Parks, and plenty more. Uh, now they've added even more acts to the lineup. The bands added to the lineup include Lights, Wage War, uh, Plain White Tees, Touch of More, Tiger Jaw, oh, Tiger's Jaw, Hello, goodbye, wallflower, employed to serve in our hollow, our home. Hmm. Damn. Hmm. That's hmm. what you call slam dunk. We really need the soundboard. You know. Van, Vans <laughs> Warped Tour 25th anniversary show locations have been announced. One date in Cleveland, two dates in Atlantic City. So now they're trying to do anniversary show. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why didn't you just do it one more year? On your 25th anniversary? Yeah, and then end it after the 25th anniversary. I don't even so remember stupid. why they ended anyways. I don't even remember. I don't know. I can't remember. It was like, there was like, so like you, there were so many stories about like reminiscing that you didn't really actually get like what the reason was. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully somebody, I don't, what was it? Somebody said that kind of opens up for more individual tours though. Yeah. Hopefully there won't be, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that'd be great. More individual tours. So, the festivals are cool, but... Yeah, sometimes... I mean, they get to the point where they just cost so much money. Yeah. So... And you don't always want to see all the bands. Right. And you have to pay so much money to go see the one or two bands you do want to see. Yeah. So, uh, before we give these guys a call, let's uh, check out one of their songs. Okay. From their uh, EP in the water. Word.
Hot damn. All right. <coughs> Hot diggity damn. So that was Colt by the Underground Vault. Oh, no. You had a, you had a speedy coffee? Mm-hmm. It's okay. I got a Dr. Pepper. You got a Dr. Pepper? <laughs> Perfect. All right. Let's switch on over. Give these. Ooh. Oh, big gulp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta go big. Gotta go big. Right. My throat's sore and dry. So it's thorn and dry. Thor, th- oh my god. Thorn and dry. You know what I didn't do? What? Hit record? <laughs> <laughs> it's out of sight. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. You know? Well, there goes my New Year's resolution. <laughs> <laughs> you got the one. I did it once or twice or whatever. All right, let's know. do this. All right. Oh. <laughs> oh no. What happened? Oh. They call it back. Oh. There it is. There we go. Well, what's up? <laughs> hey guys. Hey. hey. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah. We got you. Hey. Good to see you, man. Yeah, yeah. How's it going? All right? Good. How you guys been? Yeah. Good, man. Busy. Busy boys. Yeah, that's uh, good. Personal <laughs> today. So. The last time we talked to you guys, you guys just had a picture up of your drummer. Yeah, he's yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was off Gannabans in around the world, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. <coughs> Well, it's well, good to see you guys again. It's been uh, it's been a long time. Yeah, almost a year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. We've been busy. It's gone quite quick, though. I mean, we've, we've had lots going on with the uh, second EP, recording that and, and releasing that and the gigs. And, yeah, it's gone really fast. Right on. So uh, what have you guys done in the past year? Any uh, Anything fun? Sure. Um. Yeah, basically, we've obviously released we've released our second EP. Um, mm-hmm. We've had yeah really good feedback from that, uh, really good reviews, and um, we've even had a fan page in the US being started up by a fellow American. <laughs> so, nice. um, yeah, so we've had that. That's all been happening, and now we're just this year we're concentrating on the gigs. So we've got um, plenty in the, the pipeline now for this year. So. Um, we'll tell you a little bit more about that in a bit, but <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, got, we're going to Scotland basically on a, a mini tour. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's coming up in April. So got three gigs in three nights. So nice. that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was it getting the EP recorded and everything put together? Was that a pretty smooth process or? Uh, I guess as, as smooth as it it can really go, really. I mean, writing songs and, and producing them and recording them is always always challenging. And we wanted the new EP to be um, a step up from the first one. So, um, but I think we achieved it, and it's got great reviews and stuff. So, yeah, it, it's good. We enjoyed it. Right on. Awesome. <coughs> um. Well, <laughs> was there uh, any main influence for the the new EP? Was there anything that influenced you guys, like with the, you know, with the lyrics or the music? Was there anything that drove you guys? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, like like Bear was saying, the main influence was just to, to, to step it up from mm-hmm. Dawnbreaker. I think last time we saw, it, we just released Dawnbreaker, and that was all uh, that was all self self produced, self engineered. So this time we, we decided to step in, get a hire a studio, get a, an engineer to just record. Uh, as far as the songwriting goes, I mean that was you boys sort of started started again writing writing the tracks. Yeah. Um, so I mean, what was the uh, start on that? Oh really? We just we knew off the back of, of uh, Dawnbreaker that you know we, this EP is bigger, so we've got six six tracks on there. Uh, we wanted to expand a little bit, so musically we. 
you know, one of our tracks on there in the waters, eight and a half minutes. So mm -hmm. we wanted to expand on what we did before. You know, the, the first EP had, you know, had good rock tunes on there and we kept it, you know, nice, nice and easy. But we expanded it a lot from the second EP. We, we worked hard on the production because uh, we did that ourselves. Um, and uh, no, it's come out, and like I say, we're very happy with, with the quality of how it's come out. So uh, now we're just going to gig heavily this year, ready for the third EP or album, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we had, um, I had a lot more fun personally as well doing the second EP because mm. I could really go for it, which is what it's all about, mm -hmm. especially on the drums. And yeah, I got a few like, dance beats in there as well. Um, I'm a big fan of like bands like the music and the twang, like old school British bands. So um, take that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so it's good. It was good to mix it up and yeah, just get because I'm pounding drums and bass down and then top it off with some nice guitar. So, nice. Yeah. So we just listened to uh, the song Pistol. Um, can you tell us what that song's about? Uh, it was written quite a few years ago in a previous band uh, many years ago. Mm hmm. It's kind of like a bit like a revenge song, really, and uh, a lot of heartfelt lyrics in there. I mean, it's obviously, the song is called "Cult," <laughs> but um, oh yeah, sorry, I don't know why I said "pistol." <laughs> I was wondering where you got that from. I was like, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a revenge song, really. It can mean many things. I mean, every song means something different to every listener, so. I think someone, everyone finds a different lyric in there that sits with them, you know. But, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's probably the, the oldest song that we've got out of all the songs because that's from a previous previous band. But um, it fitted well with this band, so we kind of brought it in. Yeah, we did we did change it a little bit as well. It's, a little bit, yeah. I mean, we're a bit heavier than one of our last bands, so to get the, the snare proper going and then, yeah, and the chorus is open mm -hmm. up on the bass and, yeah, that makes a big difference, I think, with this band. Yeah. Yeah, I know when I first heard it, I was sold on it straight away. Like, even though I wasn't a part of kind of writing it initially, mm. I was happy to get on board. It's a quality track. Well, you know, I'm a fan of it myself. So. And I was when I was kind of coming up with a riff for that song, um, I was listening to uh, a lot of Jimi Hendrix at the time, mm -hmm. especially the band of Gypsies. And uh, there's a song in there called Machine Gun. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kind of riff, it was, the riff was inspired by that riff. So. Nice. If you listen to that, you'll see that there's no the inspiration is quite clear there. <coughs> Plagiarism. <laughs> um, do you guys have any uh, plans on doing any music videos or anything in the future with some of these songs? Done one, we? Yeah, we we recently done one um, for Every Man's Fantasy uh, off the second EP in the water. Um, and yeah, we hired a studio for one of our good friends, Steve Lyons. He's so, like, and a bunch of studios. Yeah, worked with Clapton quite a lot and quite a few big artists. He's got a nice studio. Nice. Uh, yeah, he's got a nice studio and he panicked yeah. on the studio. So yeah. we went up there um, and yeah, recorded a video there, which was quite fun. I hate recording videos, but it's got to be done, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be a fun process to do. It's a lot of work, but it's pretty cool yeah. seeing all the different videos everybody comes up with and... Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we kept this one simple, just yeah. sort of, uh, just trying some different angles, um, just getting, trying to put out the vibe of just what it's like being in the studio, just working out as we do. Yeah. Um, so it's just a nice, simple way to get started. But we're obviously going to progress and try some new stuff. Um, just, yeah, mm -hmm. the editing. Some jesters, few me jits. <laughs> we're getting there. We're just saving up the parts now. We've got, we've got plenty of uh, live video footage which is is getting good you know really good feedback especially on the youtube channel and stuff so mm -hmm. um so we've been posting a few bits of, of live events a lot and things like that so that's, that's just, it's working really well so far so you're right is it cut out our camera was out of focus yeah it keep, one it of keeps going out of focus i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm not <laughs> being weird hey <laughs> It doesn't go back. In, you have to like put your hand up in front of it right here for it to like come back. I don't know why. Yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
just gonna <laughs> knock it over. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you guys are, have you guys played any? Um, were you playing a lot of shows up until releasing this EP, or were you just working on getting this recorded and getting it out? Well, the EP, the EP has all of that, and it was released what a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're yeah, September, October. Yeah, September, October, we released the second EP, so that's on a every good store, and um, <laughs> so now we've kind of that's been we spent a lot of time recording that and, and getting it out there. So now it's really about the gigging and. Mm -hmm. uh, getting us out there so people can see us live and kind of gig both the EPs. Um, so we'll do that probably all through spring and summer. And then probably we'll get in a little bit in the studio during summer to record something fresh, something basic, a song or two. And then by the end of summer, by the time the weather changes again, maybe or we'll maybe start heavily into the third EP. But I think we just want to enjoy the gigging and, and the, the nice weather. It comes here. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is the, um, we're getting a lot of, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people talking, offering a lot of different options to record. So I don't know whether we're recording in England or we're going to go abroad. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. US is obviously on the radar. Um, Prague. Maybe Prague or Canada. Denmark. But we just got to weigh up our options and see what, you know, what is feasible really for us. Because we're up for anything, you know, we're up for going, we're going to Scotland on a tour. Yeah, we're just going to go up there and do what we do. Um, so recording-wise, I think we need to get out of our comfort zone a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. It's good to mix it up. I know it, yeah. it works the way we're doing it. Get in the studio, and me and Pete smash out the rhythm and stuff. But it's all good. But, I mean, locking ourselves away somewhere, maybe abroad, and yeah. kind of really focusing on the music and, mm -hmm. yeah, having a good laugh as well. So see what happens. Yeah, it's all going in the right direction. How many yeah. stops are you guys having on your tour? Do you know yet? Or how many shows you're playing for the? For the Scottish tour is three three dates. Okay. Uh, we're playing Dundee on the fourth of April, uh, Bathgate on the fifth of April, and Edinburgh on the sixth. Nice. So three three big dates there. We've got some great support coming in. Great uh, artists that are supporting us, and um, I think there's a lot of people up in Scotland that. Uh, dying to come and see us play live. They see us a lot on social media, mm -hmm. but they want to meet us and, and hear us you know, face to face. So, cool. yeah, it's going to be good, good around. We can't wait. Cool. It's, cool. Yeah, it's going to be a good platform for other mm. sort of unsigned indie bands to just showcase what they've got, you know. Mm -hmm. So, good yeah. support coming as well. How far, how far do you have to travel to get to Scotland from where you guys are at? Is it a. <laughs> I think they, I think we're getting the train up there because we're taking a lot of gear up there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, so nice. no airlines kind of throw our stuff around. So we thought we'd get the yeah. train, but yeah, I think, oh, I think yeah. the, uh, the train's about five hours. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, that's five, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not too bad. Better handling for your equipment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we some trouble. You know, we want to make sure like we can keep an eye on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stuff's expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I think the la the last time we talked to you guys, uh, you guys were getting ready to play a music festival, and you guys were pretty excited about it. How'd that go? Yeah, so yeah, so we played last last summer, summer before twenty seventeen. We played um, uh, a big festival, a local big festival called St Mag's Fair. It was about ended up about three and a half, four thousand people. Oh wow. That watched us there, and it was hot. And it was <laughs> the stage was a, a lorry, and they basically you play inside the lorry, a big lorry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was it was scorching, but uh, it was brilliant, a great gig. And then the following year, we played uh, a really famous blues festival called the Ealing Blues Festival, um, where a lot of big big famous blues acts have played there, blues rocking acts. And um, we've done that, and we got named as band band of the day or band of the the gig, um, festival or something nice. like that. First time we've ever played there, so oh, nice. they, they were quite shocked, really. And that was hot as well. That was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's hot. I'm ready for uh, summer. But yeah, we play some some good clubs. Called the, there's a the Boom Boom Club, which is a, a really famous um, club in Sutton, run by a guy called Pete Finch. He's 
a lot of acts pass through there, Albert Lee and um, a lot of other famous musicians, and we played that, and that was that was great as well. So, um, yeah, like but this year seems to be building up to surpass all the ones previously. The stuff, the offers we're getting, and the stuff we're coming up just seems to be skyrocketing. So we're really excited. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> um, well, <coughs> I'm dying over here. <laughs> I've had a cold all weekend. Him and I both have been <clears throat> fighting a cold. The weather here has been nasty. It went from negative 15 on Wednesday to, what is it, about 50 degrees today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically Jeez. everyone's dying. Yeah. <laughs> so seeing the weather, seeing the weather got really bad, didn't it, across... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Around. Yeah. yeah, it was a little, bit, a little bit of snow, but nothing like that. But it was like a negative 15, and then with the wind chill, it ended up being like negative 44. Yeah, that's what it felt like outside. And now it's 50 degrees out. Yeah, so like <laughs> you know, 110 <laughs> degree difference. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But yeah, everybody's dying of colds and flu and everything else over here. <laughs> um, but I don't know what else you got for him. Um, we're going to play a couple more of your songs. Uh, yeah. We got lined up uh, In the City and In the Water. Yeah. Um, is there any story behind those two songs? Um, I'll tell you, what would you reckon? Well, In the City, um, that's a show, we sort of wrote it on acoustic in the city and um, before we took it into the full band. And uh, I don't know, I was playing acoustic, yeah, electric, I think, just from we wrote it here actually at my house as well. Mm. Um, and yeah, we, we took in, we weren't sure a full band how it's going to work with our style that we, we play. Um, but it gelled together and come together very quickly. And um, we've had people in, was in America, in the US, Florida, there's people have really taken on to that track. Mm. They played on um, a lot of radio shows now, picked it up, and um, it's probably a bit more commercial than some of our music, I guess. Um, but yeah, we've had uh, nominations for a lot of awards, indie awards and stuff because of that song, um, which is good. Just independent sort of awards and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, In the Water was the, that's our eight and a half minute sort of finale to our second EP. So uh, that song's, um, yeah, elaborates on everything we've done to date. And uh, we want to grow on that for the third EP. So Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for coming and talking to us, guys. And it was good hearing from you again. It's um, a lot. Hopefully, you guys come over this way sometime and we can see you play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've got, um, we'll get plenty of live footage from when we go to Scotland. We've got some people who want to get involved and help. So, I think we're going to have a lot of live footage from there. So, we'll tag you into a lot of it. And, um, um, also, we are planning coming hopefully out to the US in 2020. So we just got a few people that we're in contact with at the minute. Um, we just got to sort of work out the hows and whys and the whats or whatever. Man. Right. Yeah, we, are, we are trying to get out. So yeah, as soon as we have any information moving on of that, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Awesome. <laughs> Sweet. That'd be cool. Um, <coughs> well, good luck in Scotland and have fun. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important part. Gotta right. have fun, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for taking the time out of your evening and hanging out with us for a little bit, and you know, keeping us updated on the music you guys are making. Love the new EP. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank Cheers, guys. Thank you. Yeah, your show's doing really great. You see, so podcast <laughs> going from strength to strength, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <Now> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After 111, I heard you saying earlier on, that's a, that's a serious amount of shows you've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keeping it going, hopefully, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, great work. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Yeah, fair play. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, tag us in and everything you're promoting as well. And, um, yeah, rapidly, our social media is all growing all over the place. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we we'll make sure, um, yeah, get plenty of good promo on there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well. Yeah. Um, all right guys well yeah cheers for having a song um yeah speak to you soon all right yep you guys have a good night thank you yeah, you too see you later take care cheers. all right and the camera's blurry again 
Let's shut that off there. Yeah. Let me get there. Oh, yeah. Uh, boom. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the Underground Vault, all the way from, based out of London, England. Woo! So, uh, we got the link. They're on Facebook. If you're looking at our chat, the link's up there on the Facebook. Um, don't forget to check out their EP, In the Water. It's great. Hell, yeah. Um, we're going to hear some more from that. We're going to play another song. Um, the other, uh, you know, you can check out everything. It's on Spotify, Google Play, I, iTunes, Apple Music. Um, they're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They're on SoundCloud <laughs> as well. So mm-hmm. check it out there. Um, we're going to check out their song. Which one do we have on tap here? In the City. Right on. So we're going to give that a good old-fashioned listen. And I'm just being awkward because I'm trying to fill time. I feel like I'm losing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. Hot damn, that's a jam. <laughs> Uh-oh. Don't know why it does that. I have. Autoplay when you turn it off, yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah, it's like off, unless it turned itself back on. It's like, YouTube. It's 
I turn it off every time, and it does it anyways. It knows everything, <clears throat> and it's controlling everything. Yeah, F you, YouTube. Just kidding, don't take our page down. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was In the City by The Underground Vault. Hell yeah. Don't forget to check them out on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Mm-hmm. Spotify seems to be the juggernaut lately. Yeah. I've been using it more. Yeah? I don't have my... I, I'm probably just going to cancel my Apple one. Are you? I well, I mean, it. you're on Android anyway, so... I know. But I have so much saved. I know. That. Dude, I was driving the other day, and usually I just, you know, there's like 5,400 songs on there, so I'm like, oh, I'll just put it on shuffle. Hmm. And then sometimes it'll just be like Eminem, 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 <laughs> Eminem, BC Boys, Gorillas, and then something like, it'll be like The Beatles. The Be- I'm like, that's not, you're come on, you're not shuffling. No, yeah, it's, I don't know. But then it's like, you ever get to the point where like it'll just shuffle and you're like, I don't want to listen to that. Yeah, every time I don't want to listen to that. That's why I don't put it on shuffle. I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> well, there's sometimes I'm like, what do I want to listen to? I just, I'll just put it on shuffle. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. See, that's when I usually just go to a playlist on Spotify, like a metal one or whatever. Yeah, there's just some days where I'm like, I don't know what I want to <laughs> listen to. Yeah. Well, and uh, I don't know if and I like metal, but I get to the point where I'm like, there needs to be some like diversity in metal because it's all like starting to sound the same. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that that laugh was. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, speaking of Apple Music, mm-hmm. Apple Music and American Airlines to offer free streaming on flights. Hmm. Um, Apple Music and American Airlines are partnering up to offer to offer users free streaming on flights. Subscribers won't need to pay for Wi-Fi while flying to listen to music, podcasts, or watch videos on the service. Hmm. Uh, started February 1st, Apple Music users can use the airline's Wi-Fi to stream music. Pocket. Yeah, it just said that. <laughs> According to uh, Billboard, 455 out of 800 American Airline domestic planes currently have via stat satellite Wi-Fi. So most users will have access to the deal. Dude, that's space. That's space internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to use the service, customers need to connect to the American Airlines Wi-Fi, then go to aa.viastat.com to enable it. The next step is opening the Apple Music app, hmm. and you're all set. Users who don't have a subscription can sign up on board and receive free access for three months. The only catch of the new deal is the Wi-Fi will only work for Apple Music. Hmm. So flyers will still have to pay for the service if they want to use other apps. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's not a bad deal, though. I no. Mean, that's kind of nice. Because you can watch a movie or something if, you have, if, you're, if you're using... Right. Um, wait, so yeah, you can use it. like So you can know, iTunes? Like you can use the movies in iTunes? Is that what they're saying? Yeah, you can only use the... You can... For free. It'll stream for free. As long as you're connected to that Wi-Fi through your Apple device. Hmm. That wouldn't be bad if like you... Because I have movies on iTunes and stuff. Right. That'd be kind of cool. So basically they're saying <clears throat> if you use it, you don't have to download the stuff to your device. You can just stream it. What is it? I wonder if it's fast enough for everybody. To... See, that's what I was wondering. I mean, it's space internet. So what? It is space internet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the faster the plane goes, the faster the internet works. Ooh. Crank, them, crank that bad boy up. Yeah, that's just science. Speed of sound. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the, the jet goes the speed of sound. The speed the of The music streaming. files download faster because you're going as fast as the music coming into your ears. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that's... Logic. Logically, yeah, that makes sense. That's just got to work, right? <laughs> Logically, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, models and artists, part of the fire <coughs> Festival facing subpoenas. Um, Kendall Jenner, Bella Hadid, Hadid. I don't remember how you say her name. Hadid. 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 I don't know. And other models and artists who helped promote the festival are now facing subpoenas. The celebrities might have to reveal information about the payments they received by organizers. Organizer Billy McFarland for their music festival appearance reports Billboard. Between 2016 and 2017, Fire Festival booked supermodels and influencers to be part of a video promoting the event. As the two recent documentaries from Netflix and Hulu show, the festival was a complete disaster and ended with McFarland being convicted. 
The co-organizer pled guilty to multiple counts of fraud and is serving a six-year prison sentence. However, the investigation was... <clears throat> however, the investigation over what happened regarding Fire Festival continues. Now, Jenner, Heided, Holly Bieber, and other <laughs> supermodels, as well as the agency represents them, are facing subpoenas. They might have to give an account of the payments they received to help promote the festival. As Billboard reports... The trustee overseeing the bankruptcy of Fire Media asked for the subpoenas on Friday, January 25th, according to the trustee. Gregory Messer, IMG Models, received $1.2 million from McFarland from November 2016 to February 2017. Jenner, however, seems to have even more to explain. She might receive a subpoena as part of a broad effort to understand what happened to $11.3 million paid out by McFarland in the weeks and months leading up to the Doomed Festival. The model also received $250,000 payment in January 2017. Soon after, she shared on Instagram a post saying members of Kanye West's good music family would perform at Fire Fest. However, she didn't tag it as a paid post. Messer also wants to subpoena more people involved in the festival, including artists, media agencies, and other companies, says Billboard. The trustee will look into the artists paid to promote the Fire Media app, including Soldier Boy, Walk a Flock of Flame. The rappers received one hundred fifteen dollars and $150,000, respectively. It's just crazy. So, like, where did the millions of dollars <coughs> come from? Um, he scammed it out of investors. Right. And uh, he I'm didn't... Like, I mean, I, I watched the documentary, and they, like, they kind of went into pretty deep detail how they promoted the event and, you know, the marketing for it was actually genius. It really was. But yeah. like, so they just, it got to the point where they couldn't house the people that bought like, well, cause it got to the point where, cause they were like on Pablo Escobar's Island and the owner was yeah. like, don't use that as they publicity. Yeah, they didn't want them to know. Right. So they did it anyways. And then they kicked him off the Island. Right. And then they moved it to another Island and then that one didn't work out. So they moved it to a third Island, which was the main, yeah. Exuma's what, what was it uh, called? Uh, Something Exuma, I can't Exuma remember. Island or something. something. Like that. It's the main. It's the yeah. main island or yeah. whatever. I guess for the Bahamas. And so they bought this plot where they were going to be putting like up condos. <laughs> yeah, it was like a dead construction yeah. zone that never got finished or something. Yeah, literally like in the bay. Yeah, it was like supposed to be like condos or supposed to be something was supposed to be built there and it wasn't never done right. or something. So it was just. But they old... are they already sold these villa packages. Yeah, there's no villas. That and then they were like. Renting out condos and stuff on the original island. In so, the in the Hulu one, he says that they rented two hundred and fifty houses or something, but then lost the keys to them. Oh God! But there's no proof that they ever rented those houses. Like he's saying that yeah, we rented the houses, we just lost the box of keys. I'm like really? And it was like millions of dollars worth of rentals. So they're like, so you lost the keys to box all of, of these keys. rentals. Yeah. They're and probably like, what are all these keys for? I don't pretty know. sure he was lying. They never rented the houses. Yeah. Because there was, and it was going on during a whole nother event on the Bahamas. That same time that the fire festival was supposed to be going on. Oh, yeah. It was like there the, was the a, boat thing. There's some, yeah, boating event that goes on there that's real big. Yeah. So there's no houses available to yeah, rent. Yeah. Or hotels, nothing. Yeah. It was all booked out, anyways. Yeah. And they, yeah. <laughs> Basically, the whole island was booked out. Yeah. <clears throat> and then they put up those FEMA tents. <laughs> yeah. Some guy did research and found out that they were FEMA tents from Hurricane Andrew. Yeah. Which was what, in the 90s? Yeah. So they're old ass tents. They're old ass tents. Probably mildewy from sitting around. Yeah. You know, th they may, they may, they could have had a small chance of pulling it off if that rainstorm didn't come through that night before. Right. Because it just basically ruined the tents and everything inside well, the and tents. It was so hot that being in those tents would have been miserable. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, like, people were showing up, and they were still building. They were still building things. Yeah. They were still building the lockers for people to put their stuff in. They were literally pulling the plastic protective coating off of them as people mm -hmm. were showing up. And they were throwing their luggage out of the back of that semi-trailer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're just like, find it. Find your luggage. The whole, F you. Find your luggage. I don't, I don't really agree that you can really um, hold some of these Instagram models to too much legal action. Right. Because they didn't know. Right. Um, they were they were being paid to promote it and that's what they, they did. should they should maybe be smarter with their contracts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know what their contracts were, if they had a contract for the promotion. Like if you know, they're not they're not affiliated in the sense of they they didn't have anything to do with the festival failing. 
I mean, it was doomed from the start. It's when, like when a movie fails and you blame the actor. Yeah. I mean, you can't really... The actor didn't promote it. That's not his job. Like, it's not... His well, job is to act. Yeah. It's just... I don't think you can really blame these these people. I think it's kind of gross that there's these influent these these influencers. That are kinda, yeah. It's kind of silly. But... <clears throat> I mean, I get it. They literally paid them a minimal, minimal amount of money for them to promote it. It's basically a new version on their of Instagram. a commercial. It's a commercial. Yeah, it's literally like... You know, you see people on TV just because... Yeah, it's like a flow from Progressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't blame her for for something Progressive does. Right. I mean, you can't blame these people for something that this Billy McFarlane did. They didn't know he was... Unless they explicitly knew that he was scamming people. Well... And there was like emails if, and they knew that he was scamming them. If people would have known him <clears> like more... Yeah, that he did that magnesis thing, mm -hmm. or it was like a club card. That was a scam. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Immediately, it, it was wasn't a scam. even a. It wasn't its own card, right? It was like it's your card, but you pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're basically paying double. You got your own credit card, and yeah. it works with this thing. It's supposed to give you perks. Right. It's supposed to add perks to your own existing credit card. Yeah. It's like a members club but thing. But it didn't. They but just, no, they just he took would the buy, money. Yeah, he would take money for tickets and then didn't actually have those tickets and buy them for scalp. Yeah. They explained it in the Hulu one. I don't know if they explained it in the Netflix one. So he'd get like, so like um, he sold tickets to Hamilton. Didn't actually have tickets for Hamilton. Oh, yeah, yeah. S bought outrageous prices off scalpers for those tickets. Gave them to the people like the day of. He had to go get the tickets from scalpers. He took all the money bought these tickets for more than the people paid for the tickets or got them for. Right. So he was losing on it, like, a lot. Yeah. Giving them those tickets and then go sell another ticket to something else and do that, but it wouldn't, you know, it's not going to work out. Right. And they were talking mm -hmm. about, like, the fire thing originally started as an app, you know, like, yeah, to, to, to book. book artists. Yeah. But, like, there's like, yeah, if you want to book them for your birthday party, you can. It's like... No. It's not gonna work. That, it's not gonna work. No, they'll be like, so and so wants to reserve you for a birthday party, and they'll be like, I'm not fucking doing that. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't see how it would work. Anyways, I want to book DMX for my nine year old's birthday party. It's supposed to be a direct line to the artists. Yeah, no artist that big is it gonna. No, God no. You're gonna get requests all day, every day right. about stupid shit. That's why you have agents and yeah, they they management. Hand yeah, you have agents, you have a manager, you have a publicist. They handle all that stuff. <laughs> now, if it was for smaller acts, that would could, be it. Could work. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, it would help Show, them. It would showcase their talent, right. and then but you like, can book them. But. Major recording artists like that, they're gonna be like, "No, I'm not doing that." They're gonna get flooded with people trying to get a hold of them. Could you imagine if like somebody booked Lady Gaga for a six year old's birthday party and she's just <laughs> like, Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> she comes out all dressed up crazy. Comes out in her meat suit. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, I'm vegan. <laughs> My child's vegan. How dare you? <coughs> yeah, like it it would just be chaos. Yeah. I think Jaw Rule's starting to uh, he is he in any trouble? Like nobody said anything I about John Rule. Like he kind of walked away from it. Like I ain't had nothing to do with this, dude. He like straight ghosted. <laughs> like where is he? It's John Rule. <laughs> no, he started the app. Um, he started an app that's basically just like it. Uh, what was it called? After all this? Yes. After all, after the fire thing went down, um, Jaw Rule. Why are you texting me? Jaw Rule started the app, another app that's the same thing as the Fire app. Yeah. I can't remember what it was called. Let's see if I Is can it called it. Water? <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is it? I can't remember. It was on the Hulu one. <laughs> it was on the Hulu thing. But you like listen to these people talk about all the shit they went through trying to set this up like they fired the caterers like what four weeks out for or was it like six weeks or something like that from the start of the festival uh-huh and then that's that's where the infamous image came from where it was just a cheese sandwich with lettuce and a tomato <laughs> in a styrofoam <laughs> container <laughs> yeah can i have the uh, brisket no you get a fucking cheese sandwich <laughs> who made those sandwich? like I was that know. that was that the lady that got thrown into it from the hotel 
I think so. And she had to come up. She, I think that was they had to come up with food for these kids. Yeah, like they didn't have anything. They had like uh, with the original catering com- catering company, it was like a five million dollar contract. Uh huh. You know that they they were gonna pay to have all this food catered. It's supposed to be good food and yeah. And then like they fired the catering company and didn't even pay them for what they had already <laughs> done. <laughs> they didn't pay a lot of people. Yeah. My biggest takeaway, though, out of the whole documentary is the guy that learned how to fly on Microsoft Flight Sim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was like, I've been a pilot for six months. I learned how to fly on Microsoft Flight Simulator. He's like, you can learn how to fly a plane from that. I want to know if that guy's still alive. <laughs> and then they said he would take off and just like go straight up. Yeah, he'd do all kinds of Install crazy the shit. plane. Yeah. I want to know if he's still flying. Is he still alive? <laughs> they had video of like Jaw Rule like up against the ceiling. Like, <laughs> ah! like that guy's going to kill somebody. Yeah. Learn how it's to fly he Microsoft didn't. Flight Sim. <laughs> Did he get his license? I have 17 hours of flight time. Does he have his flight? I, dude, there's no way he has <laughs> Did his... somebody his... just give him a plane? <laughs> I think I think he said he just bought the plane. Jesus Christ. There's no way he has his pilot license. <laughs> People would look at him and be like, he'd be like, where'd you learn how to fly? Oh, Microsoft Flight Simulator? <laughs> no. I'm not giving Bro. you this license. <laughs> There's no way he legally had a license. I <laughs> <laughs> And they were showing like all the wrecked planes around the island. I was like, those are probably his planes. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably killed like 40 people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then the poor guy that was like trying to manage the festival, they kept throwing things at him and they were like, hey, um, they have all of our water. We want you to go suck oh this guy's God. dick. Yeah. And they were serious. And he was like, I was literally going to suck that guy's dick. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> 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 I mean, and they get there and they just release the water to him. And he's like, oh, <laughs> he's like, oh, dang, <laughs> man. He's, he, yeah, cause he was like, he's like, I went to the bathroom and washed my mouth out with mouthwash and I went in there. <laughs> Jesus. I was like, oh my God. I thought he says, like, yeah, I did all this and that. I was like, he's not going to do it. Like, he's going to tell them to fuck off. And, and he, nope. was, yeah, he was like, I was going to do it. Why would you? Were you even getting paid? Like, was he even making any money? Probably not. Because they <clears> called <throat> him in, like, what? Like, pretty close to the end. Pretty I close thought. to when it was supposed to actually go live. <coughs> yeah. I mean, it was all downhill when you have to put $1 million down on an island. Just to negotiate to buy the island. Right. And then they tell you don't use Pablo Escobar's name as publicity. And that's the first thing you do. <laughs> and then they kick you off the island. At that point, you should have been like, let's just step away. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. But like all the crap those people went through. And then the guy they had come in to like manage like the booking of the acts and everything and... <coughs> yeah. They, they uh what are they? Oh yeah, he's like, "Look, we have like 300 people that don't have a place to sleep or stay for this entire event. Right. What we need you need to reach out to these people and make them confirm that they're going to be here." And he's like, "They're going to have nowhere to stay." And they responded an email that said, "At least they'll see your beautiful face and your sweet yoga skills." because <laughs> he was gonna yeah he was the yoga instructor yeah and he was just like <clears throat> he's like i didn't know what to do so i just like okay <laughs> <laughs> dude i think at that point like i'd be like no f this somebody should have i'm not being held responsible for this the bad thing is well i don't know if it would have mattered but because when all that was going down originally we were following it pretty close like yeah. every week on the podcast you know, talking about it because more and more things just kept coming up, and we we're like, "No way, this is real." <laughs> <laughs> yep, it was real. The one kid where he said he said he's at the airport and he saw Blink One Eighty Two backed out, and he's like, oh, "Still gonna go?" <laughs> yeah, his friend was like, "Are you sure you still want to go?" And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> none of the band showed up, did they? No, like none. Nobody showed up. Like the only people that were there they were, were the never models. Paid. Nah, they weren't paid. Blink-182 yeah. backed out, and then everybody's like, oh, um, yeah, we're going to follow. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait until they try it again. Right.
I just love that he was selling tickets to the... He got the email. He took the email list from the fire Festival right after he got out on bail. Oh, yeah. And he's got this guy calling him, trying to sell him tickets to things that he can't even sell him tickets to. Like the Met Gala doesn't have tickets to buy. Right. But he's trying to sell him tickets to And it. people are buying them. Yeah. Fucking idiots. God. <laughs> And he said, and he even said, if they don't answer the first time, call them right back again the second time. <laughs> yeah, make sure you get that sale. Keep calling them. Yeah, keep calling like, them. Really? Do you think? Do you think who those? Fa- who? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like who falls for that? Right. <clears throat> well, I, I, I mean, look at all the scams that are going around now. I know. Well, <laughs> your car warranty is about to expire. Oh shit! I better oh, buy that. F- fudge! I better. I better get that going. <laughs> I don't have that car anymore, but let me buy yeah. that. Oh, fork. I better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just wow. like they did that to me. Like, your car warranty is about to expire. And I was like, all right, I'm going to talk to these guys. <laughs> 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 They're like, yes, would you like to renew your car warranty? I was like, um, I didn't know it was about to. Uh, you might want to call Subaru because this is a brand new car. They <laughs> 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 Just hang up. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're going to waste my time. I'm going to waste your time. Right. Fucking hate those people. But I've blocked so many numbers that I don't even think they can call me anymore. I block them, but they just get a new number. I don't even. I don't even block. One them did call me the other day, and it was like an updated version of it, and I was like, "Oh, oh, it doesn't sound like." <laughs> <laughs> this is the IRS. Yeah. Local police are on their way. Dude, I can't wait for that one. Why are the IRS sending the local cops? Yeah. <laughs> it's the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> they just show up. They'd be sending the FBI, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> this is the IRS, the FBI, Homeland Security, and... and The Canadian Mounted Police are on the way. <laughs> oh, no, not the Mounties. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, how much money do you need? <clears throat> I can hear them galloping down the street now. <laughs> yeah. You boys better be safe, eh? <laughs> you better t- pay your taxes, eh? <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see that episode of How I Met Your Mother where like Barney finds out he's like yes. <laughs> 25% Canadian? So he keeps having those dreams about like he runs into himself, but he's dressed up as a Mountie. And he just like keeps punching him. And he's like, boy, you packed quite a wall up there. Just being too nice to him. Yes. <laughs> Shoot. All right. Well, we got one more song to check out. Oh, yeah, we do, don't we? We do. Let's do that. Let's do that. <coughs> so, we're going to check out this last song. It's called In the Water. Mm-hmm. It's the title track of the EP, so let's give it a listen. Give her a whirl. Oh, I forgot. I got to I turned that down in case uh, something crazy happened.
Dang. All right. That was in the city by the underground vault. Mm-hmm. I'm losing my voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh don't forget to check them out on god it's getting deeper we're it's dying getting... yeah don't forget <laughs> to check them out on uh itunes google play spotify apple music they're also on facebook twitter uh instagram and soundcloud the internet they're on the internets <laughs> they're there the interconnected net Everybody's connected. Skynet. Sky. No. <laughs> no. No Skynet. <laughs> Have you not seen what happens? <laughs> Elon Musk, save us. Yeah. <laughs> I just love it in that. What if he's a Terminator? He could be. Like, he kind of weird. Kind of weird. Just love it in the interview. He's like, do you think that we could be in a simulation? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe Rogan's like, what? No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm running it. <laughs> yeah. What if he's the guy running the simulation and he comes into it like the Matrix to, to like tell us about it slowly? Oh, kind of like that episode of Rick and Morty where they go into the yeah. battery. Yeah. What if he's doing that? He's like, you can't just make up names, Morty, and call it things. What if he's like the <laughs> alien thingy that right. made the simulation? Check it out, Morty. And he's came in. Peace among worlds. <laughs> and looks like, came in to look like us, but he's actually an alien. Right. And he's telling us about it and like saying it's possible. Yeah. He's just slowly letting us know that we're in a yeah. simulation. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Conspiracy. <laughs> so yeah. Fuck. Well, Fuck. that's probably gonna do it for this. Yeah, episode. I gotta go think about stuff now. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Driving home. No way. <laughs> <laughs> that's not real. That's not <clears throat> real. So, um, thanks for hanging out, everyone. Thanks for. Uh... God, I can't speak about things today for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks to the Underground Vault for coming on, checking us out. Checking, mm-hmm. I mean, hanging out. Oh my God. God. Hanging out with us. Here, I'll fix this for you. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so we'll be back next week with Half the Animal. Pretty stoked for that one. And I'll be here because my yeah. surgery got canceled. So. It did. So <laughs> we'll be back February 8th with Half the Animal. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> <laughs>